Guitar and Excel, C major, A minor scale, fret number nine, focusing on the D note. Get ready, some coffee, and don't fret. No. Unless, of course, your guitar strings broke or something. My strings. But then I feel like fretting is part of the getting ready stage. After which point, you totally shouldn't fret at all. What have you done? You've destroyed music. Yeah, at least at least not until we start fretting stuff together. So so I still feel like the intro, get ready some coffee and don't fret still works. It still works. You know, as long as you do it like in chronological order. Well, turns out Granny Smith didn't know how to make a pig do the backstroke. Yeah, okay, Phil. I realize I didn't think about my intro very well. Uh-huh. Why don't you keep putting these photos in chronological order and- I'm practicing my improv, okay, Phil? I'm practicing my improv. Because if I don't practice my improv, it'll never improve. How can I improve? Resulting in my improv being outprov. You're stiff and monotone. Even though to improve was what I was out to prove. You need to project confidence. So stop trying to turn my efforts improv out, Phil. Turn your jersey inside out. Okay, stop trying to turn my efforts improv out. Leela, this is no time to show me your boobs. You know, God, God forbid you have to do a little editing work around here for crying out loud. Oh, show me again. Anyways, let's just get, let's just get to the guitar. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay. You can just follow along. But if you do have access, it's a great tool to run scenarios with. Quick recap of the project thus far, noting that you don't have to have watched all prior presentations to follow along with this one, but a general overview of the overall project can be useful. So let's go to that first tab to get that general overview. We've been looking at the C major scale and related modes starting out in open position defined as frets zero through three. Remembering that E represents the low or heavy E string, the one closest to the ceiling. Funnest way to map out all the notes in open position is generally to make the chords in a scale starting with the one chord the C major chord, mapping it out, discussing it in detail. We then moved to the four chord because it also has a major chord construction, mapped it out, discussed it in detail, same with the five chord, then back to the two chord, which is a minor chord construction, the three chord, the uh, six chord, and then to the seven chord, which has that diminished uh, chord construction. If we were to map out all the notes of all the chords that we looked at, we would basically be mapping out the notes in the C major scale and related modes, which would look something like the blue notes here in open position. We then moved to fret five to learn the middle of the guitar, not starting this time with chord shapes, but rather with scale shapes that we can link into the chord shapes that we learned in open position. We discussed the pentatonic scale as well as the major scale in detail and then tied out each of the notes in the C major scale and related modes. We then moved to fret seven and did a similar process in fret seven, learning the pentatonic scale shape, the major scale shape, and then mapping out each of the notes, tying them in from open position to the fret five position to the fret seven position, and now we're doing the same process starting on fret uh, number nine. That's where we are at this point. So we're at this location basically within the guitar. So let's get a quick recap of all the colors that we have here. Everything that has color in it is going to be part of our scale that we're working in, the C major scale and uh, related modes, however you want to think of it. You can imagine the blue being the ones at the bottom, meaning the first color we put down, the base color is gonna be blue at the bottom. So, so anything that isn't white has blue kind of underneath is how you might imagine it. And then we put the pentatonic scale, which is the five out of the seven notes in green, which fits perfectly on top of the blue notes. And then we put the three notes of the chord that we're focused on. We're focused on the second note. 
which is a note six or D and the related chord shape from it, and we can construct a minor chord construction from it. Noting that these three notes don't fit perfectly within the pentatonic scale because only really the, the, the C major and the related minor fit perfectly on that pentatonic scale because we constructed the chords using the notes four and seven, which are not in the, uh, the pentatonic scale. So we could see here, if I build out my chord, there's the F that we're gonna be using. So if you think in terms of pentatonic and then adding the crucial note, then you'd wanna say, I'm in kind of like the C shape, you know, the pentatonic shapes, and then add the crucial note, which in this case is gonna be the F because that's the third of the D minor chord. So then within here, we've got these brackets, which are basically breaking out the guitar into segments. And we can think about the open segment where we learned the open chords. I would call that uh, shape number four. Some people will call it the C uh, shape. And the reason they call it a C shape is because when we look at the related major scale, if you think about it in a mode, meaning if we focus on the two uh, note, then we would be building a D minor chord. We're not looking at a D minor scale though, but if we focus around that too, we would basically be playing in Dorian. But when we name these shapes, sometimes we name them in relation to the related major scale. So in this case, the C shape that fits in here is of course a C shape because it's in uh, open position. So you can label the shape that way, noting that that shape will fit in multiple positions when we look at a seven note scale, but it will be unique to the five note pentatonic scale. So you can use that as a targeting mechanism. We'll talk more about the caged system specifically later. But we of course are focused on this time the D and the D looks like uh, this. So within this shape, uh, we have mapped out the D in the dark blue, which is a little bit difficult to see. If it's leaning back, we, we put the full box around it and it's over the top. So this is over the top of the next shape that's gonna basically overlap here. So here's the next uh, shape, which we can call, I can call position number five. You might call it an A position. Why is it an A position? Because if I go back to the C and then I map this around the string, you end up with an A shape but we're not focusing on the C, we're focusing on the D, which is mapping out, in essence, minor shapes uh, through, throughout. So, so the, the minor shape that we have is focused on this D, which I can bring back to this. So you can call this basically kind of like a, a uh, C shape. It's a C minor shape. Uh, D minor chord, right? And so we'll talk more about the cage system later, but there's that. And you can also see it on this side where you have this little shape right here. Duh, duh, duh. Now that's mapped out then in purple. The purple is inside of the blue in the overlap area uh, here. And that's the idea there. So then we go to shape number uh, five around the horn to shape number one, because we break the neck into five shapes uh, basically. So, so now we're on shape number one, which we could call a G shape because if I go back to the related major, then the top of this is basically a C shape, which is boom, 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 boom. Like that would fit the, the C, the G. So that would be a G shaped C major chord, but we're focusing on the D uh, minor. So we saw, so the D is gonna be right here. So you could see we have this shape, which is our basically A minor shape, because if you had this in open position, it would be there. So now you've got kind of like an, an, an A uh, minor shape up here. So that's gonna be mapped out in red. The red is inside the purple because it's an overlapping. And then when I lean forward, the red is on the outside as it overlaps with the, the next shape. So boom, 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 boom. That's our shape there. And then when I go from uh, the first shape to the second shape, if I think about it in terms of the related major, we can call it the second shape, which in terms of the related major, you can tie it to an E uh, shaped position. So that's gonna be up here, looks like that. If I was looking at an E shaped C major chord, which is like this, right? But now I'm 
up here and but of course we are focused in on the uh, D so within the D we can reach up to this shape and do 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 so you have this boom 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 leaning back and you can think about that as basically a uh, a G minor right uh, G minor shaped uh, D minor chord because if it was a if it was a, a major you know G major shape it would look like this right or you'd have this they would convert to this and then we drop back the third so we'll talk about the cage system later but just so you know you have that uh, there that's going to be the major shape basically there and then finally we're moving up from position two to position three where we are basically working at at this point in time and if we name that shape with relation to the related major finding the major shape it would be right there so that would be a c boom 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 or you could see this little d shaped but when it when it uh d shape i'm sorry d it's a d shaped c major chord right but if i'm leaning back it's easy to hit that one that one and that one but we're focused on the d minor which this one gives you that nice full bar chord which is a little bit hard to finger up in this position on like an acoustic guitar because it's kind of a reach up top but this is the minor because if you had the minor would be here so it would be an you know an e minor shaped bar d d minor bar chord so that's going to be the major thing that we're going to construct from uh in this position now when we're practicing uh the d then we have the same kind of thing that we we might want to practice uh if we were doing this in open position we might say, hey, look, if I'm practicing the two chord, I'm just going to throw it in as I'm practicing around a C major, right? So I have a, a C to an A minor, and then I'll throw in the D minor, and then back to the C or something. I'll try to throw it in the mix. But if I want to practice the D more specifically, uh, the, and it's a D minor, I might just keep on saying D, but I'm, we're, it's the two of the, so it's the D minor. We could then play around the D. Go to the C, A minor, E minor, D, C, A minor, D. And so we're basically going to start and stop on the D. Now the, the D is, a. if we think about that, we can say, okay, I'm just going to make the two the tonic by starting and stopping on it. Or if we were to convert it to the one, that would be basically just a Dorian. So we're basically playing in Dorian which you can think of converting to the one, everything is the same, chords are the same, it's just that the numbering system uh, would change. Or we could just say, okay, I'm just gonna play around the two, which makes that D minor chord, in essence, uh, making it the tonic. Now, the, the Dorian's a pretty common mode, so it's not too difficult to make the, the D the center point, but we can use that same trick on even on the minors, and I could say, what's the fifth of the D and the fifth of the D is the A so we might then want to throw in an A to lead back to the D to give me that pull that feel of a pull home now the minors don't have the half step going home so so that's why if I make this A for example you can see the A that fits into our shape is not a major it's a minor but we can kind of cheat right and I can say look I'm just gonna when I'm when I'm going home, I'm gonna make it into a major A, an A major, and that might or like this, right? That might give me a little bit more pull to lead home. So, so I might do the same trick that I'm I would play like here's a D, here's a C, D minor, and when I go home, maybe I'll go to the A minor because I that puts my head that I know it's in the same key, and then switch it to a major pulling the third up which gives me kind of a leading feel back home so so if you're having trouble making it sound like the the D is this tonic the central point then again you might throw in an, an A that's a that you're hitting the white pot you're tipping your toe in the lava but uh, then but it should it, it should resolve uh, a little bit more cleanly so it's going to sound a little out of whack until you resolve and it's like ah okay i get it i get it the ear's like okay that's cool even though you put your toe in the lava okay so then uh so so once we have that concept then in this green position which is our point of focus up top 
we could practice all of our chords and all of our shapes in this position because we should be able to play everything within a four to five fret position. It's a little bit difficult to do that with one worksheet though because we might not be as familiar with all the shapes even though we're going through them like one by one up here. We're probably more familiar with the shapes down here so the next thing you can do to practice is to say okay I'm just gonna kind of noodle around what I'm practicing which is the D in this position and then maybe jump back to play open notes in open position. So that's one way we can practice it of course. We could then practice by moving interplay between this shape and the prior shape to try to get a, a nice flow between these two shapes which is going to help us with our vertical or horizontal transitions up the neck and then we could of course take that back one shape at a time and see if we can find lines going up and down the neck and just and basically be able to target the the notes that I'm that we're targeting in which would primarily be the one three five of the chord that we're in the one is a, is is shown in light green the three is the second most important note uh, given the flavor of the D minor in red and then the five uh, in yellow so those are the general strategies we could use let's start by just getting a feel for uh, the, this shape let's play it out again just in terms of the scale shape but this time starting with a D which is nice and natural because that's kind of like the starting point we would typically think of when we're just looking at that shape we saw that when we when we played in the key of C we kind of started back here and led into it so it sounded like a C and when we when we played in the G you know we started down here so now we can start right at the top of of the shape because we want that to be the tonic so then we could count it out by by counting one uh, one through seven converting it to a Dorian but we're going to talk about the Dorian more specifically later so I'm just going to count it out in my mind going from uh, two to two which is a little difficult to do at first but I think it's actually good practice even though even when we go to the Dorian you know later so we could see the link between the C major and the Dorian so I'm going to call that a two three four five six seven eight or one two so now I've gone from here to here and so if I look at it this way let's cut this and so we went from here to do to there ba boom and then let's let's do that again and we're going to go from here to here this time so 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 we went from let's do that again two uh two three four five six seven eight or one two so now we're on this D up top. I'm going to say two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or one, two. And then I get to that D. And again, there's still stuff up top. So you don't want to leave it out. So I'm just going to say, I'm just going to go two, three, four, three, two. And I'm trying to stop on the two. So I make, so I get my head in the flavor of Dorian. So I'm not playing what I was doing yesterday or whatever. So it sounds like it's in C major or G because I'm trying to emphasize the D. And so then we can say, okay, we're going uh, back now. So we'll say two, one, or eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. So now we're on that D right here. And then we'll bring that back up top again. So we'll say two, one, or eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Now the other thing you can do as you hit those shapes is you can play the major or the chord that's associated with it. So if I look up top, this is my big, the big bar chord for a minor. So that's what most of what we're looking at will be built on. So let's look at the chord of the minor chord construction within here. So we have this boom, 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 boom. That means you're barring all this with one finger and then these two fingers are up top. A little bit difficult to play actually if you, you can also use this finger to kind of emphasize the bar. So to try to get that, but if you can't play at all, that's fine. You, you want to get down to this. It, it's kind of crucial to get to that F though, which is actually a little bit difficult to play when you bar it because that's the only third that we have in there which gives us the flavor of the thing.
because the third, you know, so if I played this up here, it would look like that. So that's why we call this, meaning this would be an E minor. That shape moved up here. We can call this then an E minor shaped D minor chord, right, if we want to. So that's one way we, we could name it. So then, so, so then because this one's a little bit tricky to grab and so important, a lot of times I would play it like this way, which is nice and easy to grab. And then I get that crucial note right there. And then I can put these two fingers up here. So there's the pointer and then, and then my ring and pinky. That's nice and easy to grab. And then I can mute the top string and mute the bottom two with my palm and my, so. So it's a little bit inverted that way, but way easier to make sure that you get that D. If you don't get the, if you don't get it up here, you can always just play the power chord, but you'd like to get down to that third if you're trying to get the full sound of it, which again is a bit far down there. So then we could play if we could play it uh, this way. Uh, do, 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 let's do this and then like these two. So so now you've got these two and this. That's not too difficult to play. I don't do that quite as often, but it's pretty it's pretty simple to play, and you still get the the D as the lowest note. And you can mute the one above it, and I can mute the stuff below it. So that's pretty nice. And then you've got just these three which is which is nice although inverted so this has still got everything you need for a d minor but the d is the highest note in that one so notice what we're doing is we're just we're just kind of taking the pieces apart of this full bar chord and saying i can play it piece by piece i can play the whole thing i can play like this top bit like this could play something like like that I could play it this way and then I can play just the bottom bit and all those are three ways because you're, you're kind of grabbing this crucial note right here which is the the third which is something that that we're lacking or we're short on in this whole parkour so if we play but it's right in the middle so it's kind of nice that way uh, so that's gonna be that one and then you also have this uh, shape up top that we could grab uh, these two up here, uh, ba boom, and go up to here, which is kind of nice if you're playing along the low strings, so you can kind of get all your shapes with just these three strings, which is kind of fun to do uh, sometimes. All right, so that's the general idea. Let's let's then. So if you're imagining in this shape. Now you've got the, the, the D minor. What we learned thus far in this shape is basically the, the majors, right? We've done the major uh, chords in it. So we did, we've done the C, uh, we've done the, the C, we've done the one, uh, four, five, the F, and the G. So the majors, we know that if I can find the C, the, the major I'm looking at, which is that C, you have this L shape. So there's the one, right below it is the four and the five, and then we could construct our uh, chords from there. So what we've done before is that, that C can be built into this D-shaped C major, and then down below it, we've got the F. That one's a little bit more tricky. tricky. I could reach up this way to that F, or I can do it this way down here that F and then I've got this G which is actually the G shaped like this it's an A shape it's an A shaped uh, G so we've learned those in the past so you can kind of mix those in with our D so you could be playing like your D this way or your D this way moving to the C to the C and then moving uh, to the F and then the G and then we know that the A minor is something that's going to be that or the A major could lead us in to going home 
because that the A is the fifth. So one way to play the A minor would be this way. And we'll talk more about that later, but that fits in and then you can convert it to the major, which will lead into the D. So we'll talk, so I don't want to, spend too much time going from chord to chord in position. We might do that more later though because we're only mapping out one position up top which is going to be this D minor. So it might be easier sometimes to try to play something in open position and then jump up here so that we can practice the thing that we're focused on in this position so that we can get to this dusty area of the guitar. I heard someone, one of the guitar players that I saw on YouTube, they call it a the dusty, the dusty part of the neck up top, the British guy. It's, it's the dusty part. So anyway, so we can kind of jump. We, we could jump up here to try to clean off the dusty part of the guitar uh, from time to time. Uh, so, 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 so to do that, we might take it one note at a time. So I, maybe I focus on that D and I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to play something down here and then jump up to that D. So if I jump up, then it's like, well, what am I going to do up here? Well, I've got my full bar. I might not play the whole thing up here. I could just play the power chord. So that's going to be the one and the five if I need that. And the interesting thing about this shape is the whole bar is good here and here. So you can play. So in other words, this whole boom, 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 this whole column works, which is cool because that means that I can go up. All the way up and down which is rare like I don't think any other shape has it that you can actually walk all the way up and down and be basically safe <laughs> with with that so we've got that so we've got this box then that of course means that this whole box uh, is safe right there and then I can kind of reach up to that F which is a little bit outside of it so I could do double stops I can do it this way this way can reach up to that F. And then I could, of course, reach uh, anything below that. So, so as I'm kind of noodling around, sometimes it's nice to hit that C like right under, because that's easy one to, to reach uh, right there. And then we we'll go into the bottom part of that later. So if I'm in open position, I might play something like, a D minor. Let's just start with a D minor and then jump up. Now notice I'm kind of playing some strings as I jump back because all the strings are good because we're in a C major and related mode. So I can I can jump all the way up. that note obviously we could target we could say okay what if uh, uh what if i target like this note down here so if i'm like okay that's i'll target that note and then again i've got this beautiful box shape so i'm going to say there's my d right there so this is my standard shape with my pointer here that's what i would fold to as my standard shape you can also play it again this way which is a nice shape although a little tight with an acoustic guitar that doesn't have a cutout but that's a nice shape as well so I have that and then of course I have my box around this D and 
and so I, I have this box around this D I can play and I have the box below it as well. That little G is kind of fun to bend a lot of times to, to lean back into this shape. So. Now then we can also realize that we have this is where the shape extends in this middle bit. So I've got these two notes back here that we can get to. So double stop, double stop, double stop, tensiony. Now it's also nice as we're up here to realize that we have an open D back here and we also have an open a right that's why the minors are kind of nice when we look at the c when we look at the related minors to a c major scale because you got that open so if i play this d right here i mean i'm sorry if i if i play like just anything under this string basically should work so i can play this like f and i and i have uh the d over the top of it now there's a lot of distance between the octaves of this D and that F, so it's going to give you a, a, like a like a little bit of a, a dissonance sounds or different sound I get right there. But but then you can close it out with this D, which is more in the octave that we're looking at, right? So you could do stuff like. kind of play with that open that open D as well as we're kind of noodling around here so if we were to do that we can say okay here's an an open D minor and then we're jumping up here Just throwing a C So we can kind of noodle around that one. And then, of course, we've got this, uh, this D down here. So we have this shape that we can kind of jump to. So what do we have around that D? So this is just the bottom part of our bar. So now we're down here. And so I once again have this whole box. And we have this shape, which is the default shape, these three. Although it's not that heavy of a shape because the D's on the bottom. So I tend to play that and then lead back into this. Which gives you a little bit more heavier of a sound when it closes. But, but you have that and then you have these two up top. This little box up top is good as well. So you have this whole shape here and you can see the symmetry between these two shapes again. Where these two are together and then a space and then there. And then these two are together on this side. So you can say, okay, so I have double stop, double stop, double stop, double stop. These three is a D minor. Closing it back out to this shape. So if I was back here, it's like, all right.
A major, D minor. So something like that, right? So we can kind of go back and forth and, and practice those positions while we jump back and forth. Then we can try to go, okay, what can I do between these two positions and try to walk between them possibly? So my home base is usually gonna be like that D and this shape when I get up here. So it's like, okay, well, how can I connect that maybe to the last shape? So if I go from this green position three to position two, then the pivot point is like around this D up top or that D down below, you would think, right? So we have, okay, I have that. And we know that we have like this kind of shape up top, which is like a, uh, a, a, a G minor D minor shaped right a D a G minor shaped D minor so I could play it uh, I could play it that way uh, so and if you're not comfortable with it with reaching up to that pinky you can also play it basically with these you know these three notes uh, in this position although it's basically uh, inverted that way so we have boom 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 we have it that or we can do boom 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 so either way my pointer finger then is on this one and again we don't have to do it with the pointer finger all the time because you'll notice my pinky is already right here if i do it this way so i could leave my pinky into here but but i think a lot of people get confused moving from shape to shape so including me i'm practicing here too i'm not like a, i'm more of an accountant here that's running it from so i'm i'm with you but i but i'm thinking uh it's easier a lot of the time to be to be moving the pointer right that's the first thing we think about so if i'm here then my pointer is right here and so i can see my pointer is on that d and then I can say, well, what can I do there? I can kind of, I can noodle around. Oh, now I missed. I moved up the wrong one. I can, I can, oh, I did it again. I want the yellow. It won't let me grab the yellow. I can noodle around this like shape and then move up here and then possibly move into that D and then work my way around this D, right? So I could say, okay, well, if I'm right here, what can I do that's kind of interesting? Well, I can go. I'm up, now I'm up to this D, and so in, in that D, I could play in this shape. So I just basically walked up that shape until I got to that F, and then played my normal, my normal most comfortable position. So we'll see if I can do that again. So I'm on, so I, I was on this one. I'm going to say du, 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 D minor, and then I went. That takes me up to this D. I could slide that up further here. And then I just walked it down. Now, if you had, if you're playing th these three, you could play it this way. So now I'm on this, this D, but I'm just playing boom, 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 these three notes. And then I can do the same thing. Now I'm here. Because I'm looking at that finger, and then I could see that I have up top this double stops up here. So. And that takes me up to this D. And then once I'm on that D, I can walk it down, doing some double stops or so on until I get basically to here. I could take it down and say, what if I wanted to get basically to this D? Well, then I can say, okay, if I'm doing, if I'm on uh, this, this shape again, we're gonna say, so I can say, okay, I've got boom, boom, boom. And then my pointer is here again, so I have I have this this shape. I'm on this A above it is where my pointer is at, so I can kind of work that around and say, okay, well, and then I just slid that up, and that takes me to this D right there, which I can then. And so now I'm basically leading into these three notes, and then. Back to my most comfortable shape this these three notes so I can kind of walk it that way 
if we went back from the position uh, two to position one, then in position one, in this red position, then I'm looking at uh, that D, most likely. So now I'm like over here in position one, this might be most people's most comfortable position, and you've got a nice A-shaped D, so it's probably one of the most comfortable minor shape positions as well. So this is a fun position to play. Within that shape. So if we're in if we're in that shape, then we could say, okay, I'm gonna go from here basically to this D, and when I get to that D, I can play kind of this shape up top, so I can walk into that shape, and then maybe I'm gonna walk up from there to maybe that D up top, which I can then walk down to like this D. So let's try to say, okay, let's play with that. So I'm gonna say I'm on that D, I'm on this D. And then, like I say, we could uh, move up like these two fingers and say, where can I move these two fingers? But I'm gonna keep on going back to my pointer because that's the easy thing. So I have the one, the three. So many, anytime my pointer's on a minor as the root, I can always reach up to that shape and get a nice third. So I'm gonna uh, go to here and then basically Now I'm up to this shape, du, 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 and then I've got my same problem I had before, which was. So now I've walked up to this D, and then of course I can walk it down. I could do my third again, grabbing my third out here. just kind of walked back to these two to double stop double stop and then back you know up there so again whatever shape you're working on you can kind of noodle around in that shape this shape back here is probably the one you know the best maybe because it's position one so as long as I'm and you can also basically play that open D so anytime you're down here you can kind of ring out that open D shape du, 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 and then I could I could reach it up to this shape so I just basically jumped up there so then let's bring it back another one and say okay what if we've go down from this one to uh, position five so now you have your uh, D here so if I took this D that we pivoted on and lean it back then we get what you might call a C you know a C minor shape D minor chord looking something like that uh, if that if that fingering is uh, not comfortable that's that's here boom boom you could take these three in that shape it's like the inverted uh, inverted shape so you can play it like that And then think, okay, so now I have my finger, my finger is basically, if I play that, on this A, right? So it's on, it's on the A, so I could just walk that into my most familiar shape. We haven't really worked on this shape five much, so maybe I just take that finger and work it and walk it into my most familiar shape, which is going to be here in the, in, in position one, most likely my most familiar shape and then I can walk it up to here, and then I can pivot that around to here, right? And so I can say, okay, if I'm here, I can say, there it is, I'm just gonna go, just kind of cheat, or I can take it to this one. So now I'm in my most familiar shape. So now I'm doing my D in this shape, so now my, my pointer finger is here. Third. So now I'm up to this D. So now I'm into this shape. Boom, boom, boom. 
And then once I'm in that shape, I, I could go up again. So now I'm in this shape, there's my D up top, which I could just turn around to this shape. Right, and then we could of course go all the way back home and say, okay, if I'm home, my, my minor shape is here, so I could do the same kind of routine. So here my, my minor, now my, my finger is down here. The finger that's easiest to move is kind of down here, right? So I can say, so I can, I can say okay, I can kind of move that finger into this space, which I know is kind of a legal space right right here so I can be like okay and then maybe jump into this to this shape which was duh, duh, duh. and so now I'm in here and now my pinky's on that A double stop double stop now I'm on that D This, this D shape, and then I can. So I tried to go to the bottom this time, so now I'm on this D down here. So there's that. Now, just I always have to point out with these minors, a fun thing to do is always to let that D ring out all the way across. So this time I'll just say, okay, what if I, what if I, just put my finger. Oh man, what did I do? Uh, 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 I don't know. I took, I took, I took one of these blue ones off. Somehow, whatever, whatever. I'm not dealing with that right now. So we can always play, like, like, put our finger on this A, and then just play that string underneath it, all the way up. So I can say, okay, that's always fun to do. So if I put my finger on that A, I can finger that, which gives me the third, and then I can let go. Uh, well, if I let go, it's the D and the, and the third, and then I can, and the fifth, and then I can finger that, and it's the third. So power chord, adding the third, right? So I can go, dude. And I'm just muting everything else. So I'm gonna mute the A. If you don't mute the A, it's cool, because the A is also the fifth, but I'm gonna try to mute the A for the most part. also throw in the blues note meaning I'm gonna go back to uh, to as I have my finger here I go back to this note and just pick it up to get a little bit of that tension even though that works more on the D minor but I think it still works in the Dorian and then again I could just follow this forward so that I'm just gonna go here and then maybe to that G and then here and then maybe to that A and then here, and then I'm just gonna reach up to, to what makes sense, and then here, boom, and then until I get all the way over to here, right? So I'm gonna go, okay. So I can go from here. And then I can move my finger up to here. So now I'm going from here to here. So now I'm like, okay, so that's cool. So then when I move up to this one, I can play that C in the open D, C open D, and then I'm and I'm gonna grab uh, the A because that's the one above it, and then I'm gonna go up to the D, and I can grab the B, and I can also grab this F. So that's kind of a fun spot to be because so now I've got my finger on a D, and above it is a D. So I've got a double D. double D I hear is a very large sound. So you've got the twin mountains with the double Ds. So then you can go up top and go up here uh, with that F too, right? So that F and then, so I can go to that F up top and then try to mute it. So I right, and then I can go from that D 
to, oh man, I did it again. I can go from that D to this E. And then basically close it out once we get to here with our normal shape, boom, 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 the shape, right? So if I play that, so if I kind of play that back and forth, so it's kind of my middle point. Right, and then and now I've ended on this D and then I can go back this way. kind of fun to do. So anyways, that's the general idea.